forced hyperventilating followed by holding your breath until you can't anymore, then taking a deep breath in, tensing and pressing and forcing that oxygen throughout the body. Apparently doing this technique for multiple rounds will allow you to tap into another zone in your deep mind, unlocking strengths that once were thought to be impossible to achieve. Well, I just experimented with this technique for an entire week and I'm going to share with you my results. But you gotta focus. All right, so first things first, I should probably actually clarify a few things. For one, that's giving credit when credit's due. Rather than just mindlessly hyperventilating, holding my breath, everything I just said, I did a more controlled and focused breathing exercise known as the Wim Hof technique. Wim Hof is a Dutchman. The Dutchman. He's an adventurer. He's an endurance athlete. He seems like a nice guy, a cool dude. He's got quite, I mean, honestly, kind of a sad story, but also a very inspiring story. And also he's done some pretty amazing feats of human strength and endurance. Running marathons in extreme heat, running up Mount Everest barefoot, basically. Swimming in the extreme frigid cold. Taking an ice bath on like his 60th birthday for 60 minutes, etc., etc. Honestly, if you have some time, look this guy up. Not only does he display these insane acts of superhuman abilities, being able to put himself through extreme stress and just come out like he's untouched, like nothing has happened, like, oh, just another day. He has also allowed himself to be studied under medical supervision to further prove what exactly is going on and what exactly is giving him these superhuman human abilities. One insane example I think you all should hear right now. By doing his technique, not only him but a group of his students were able to, quote, release epinephrine, increasing the production of anti-inflammatory mediators, dampening the pro-inflammatory cytokine receptors elicted by intravenous administration of a bacterial endotoxin. That might sound like a whole bunch of pointless mumbo jumbo, but what this actually means in layman's terms, he and a group of his students allowed themselves to be injected with a bacterial endotoxin that should have led them to having adverse reactions such as vomiting, getting nauseous, skin rashes, etc. However, by doing his technique, himself and all of his students in the study were able to stop this adverse reaction and basically just breathe through it without any side effects. This is on PubMed, you guys can look this up yourself. So if you're like, oh, it's a study, it's probably just some article written by some kid. Now, because I wasn't planning to inject myself with a bacterial endotoxin, there are also some other benefits to this Wim Hof breathing technique. Reduced anxiety, reduced stress, happiness, faster healing, better sleep, more focused, improved mental well-being willpower, increased energy throughout the day, and boosting the immune system. Did I experience any of these? Did I have some side effects? Did I run into some problems? Do I have some advice for you? That's what I'm going to share with you right now based off of my seven day experiment where I did this breathing technique every single day for the last week. So starting off day one, I wanted to be sure I was doing this technique properly. So I watched Wim Hof's tutorial on this. It's on his YouTube channel. It's free. Everybody can watch it. It's not too complicated. It's actually pretty simple. So I dim the lights in here um, just to make it more relaxing. I'm going to sit up straight rather than like hunched over. I'm going to try to breathe into my uh, belly as so Wim Hof, the man himself says, I'm trying to make them deep. And then when I exhale, I'm not going to like force it out. I'm just gonna let it go, like he always says. This is a guided breathing session. Relax to the deepest. Round number one. Breathe in, breathe out. Breathe in, breathe out. By about breath seven, I felt like I was going to pass out. I felt like an adrenaline rush, basically. My brain was basically telling my body, stop doing this right now, otherwise you're probably gonna pass out, or who even knows. It just felt like uneasy, basically. After about 20 breaths, I felt an insane amount of tingling in my fingers, feet, and like nostril area, so like around the face and whatnot. But I fought through it and continued to finish the 30 breaths, going at whim's pace. All right, one minute breath hold from now on. 
after the first round of 30 breaths, something I realized immediately was the ability to hold my breath. Even when I did it the first day, even for just a minute, it felt like that minute went by so easily, so smoothly, I didn't even really have much of an urge to breathe. I probably could have held my breath longer, which I decided to do later in the week, but on the first day, I just did it for a minute. The second thing I realized was, after allowing yourself to hold your breath for about a minute or so, and then having that urge to breathe in again, so feeling like an uneasy feeling like, oh, I need to take a deep breath. Three, two, one, take a deep breath in and hold for 15 seconds. When it came to taking that one deep breath in and then holding that deep breath in and kind of pressing, creating pressure on the stomach, what it felt like was going on, this is totally anecdotal and just from my own experience, but what it felt like was a rush of energy out of the lungs into the rest of the body, perhaps that being a supercharge of oxygen or something like that. Exhale in three, two, one. Let it go. Round number two. Then you're entering an interdimensional world. It's the DMT releasing from your pineal gland. This is just possibly, I'm just kind of trying to think logically here. So maybe from this controlled hyperventilation, you're clearing off a lot of CO2 from the body. So that's why you're getting this tingling sensation, etc. Then you do a breath hold. Then after being too alkaline and breathing off too much CO2 and maybe having a little too much oxygen in you, during the breath hold, your body reaches that homeostasis again where things are balanced. And then it goes to the other side where all of a sudden you're craving oxygen again and you're like, okay, I need to breathe. And then what you do is you breathe in deep and you tense up and force kind of like hold that area and maybe what you're doing maybe this is just what I'm thinking is you're kind of like compressing even extra oxygen back into the system so maybe with that breath in you're hyper oxygenating your entire system your blood and then taking yourself back to even further an alkaline state before you start breathing normally and you can balance out your CO2 levels by carbon and blah 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 all that stuff so it's like you're getting like a super dose of oxygen potentially naturally now days one days two i tried to stay relaxed and i tried to just breathe through it but the feeling of being about to pass out you could really feel like the adrenaline starting to take over and i just wanted to like twitch myself out of to be like oh, okay just start breathing normal again but i was able to force myself to do three rounds of this not flawlessly but without coming out of it and being like okay okay i gotta pause the video and then just wait and go back into it no i was able to fully complete three rounds Exhale in three, two, one. Let it go. Let your breathing return to normal. After that was up, I immediately noticed I felt way more relaxed and way more clear in the mind. Almost as if any stressor in my mind before doing the breathing technique was just washed over, eliminated. I felt happy, I felt clear any worries I was having, whether it be business related, future related, lifestyle related, anything related, were just eased over. It says one of the benefits is a greater sense of well-being. You know, most of the time it's like, oh yeah, sure, okay, I feel, I feel better, I guess. But no, in my experience, this technique definitely brought about a greater sense of well-being. And that lasted a couple of hours, I would say, at the least. Also something I noticed throughout the first, second, and third days was even though I did this breathing technique earlier in the day, it seemed like my sleep was better each and every one of those nights, which is extremely good for me because I often have difficulty sleeping. I don't necessarily go to sleep that quickly, and I'm usually a very light sleeper. However, these first couple of nights, I noticed that I must have fallen asleep quicker than normal, and it seemed like I was sleeping a lot deeper than normal. Now after day three, I noticed doing the exact same technique, the tingling actually seemed to not be as bad. Also I feel like the feeling of me being about to pass out was significantly reduced after day three. Yo, so on. I feel like I can see further. I decided to do this breathing session outside in the sun like a real hippie and um, see how it went. And to my surprise, the breaths actually felt a lot smoother outside in the warm. Like the air cut, like it felt just like a very smooth inhale and exhale. Like it was almost like drinking a smooth beverage. I don't even, that's 
Also still got the same effects, but to a lesser degree, like the tingling and that just like about to pass out sensation. I didn't really feel like I was about to pass out. Yeah, to my surprise, that actually went smoother than I thought. So I thought I would do this at different times in the day to see if there was a certain time of the day that would be the most beneficial. Here's what I found out. Because this technique seems to wipe away the stress and recenter my mind and body, what I found out I actually maybe liked the best was doing this technique after a long work day but before a workout because usually after a long work day I have so much tension in my shoulders and back and when I go into my workout I'm just kind of like you know but after doing this technique I was able to approach the workout as if it was a new day and I wasn't working the whole day now the only downside I realized was after doing this breathing technique, going into my workout, initially it felt like I was maybe having a little bit of trouble getting hype because I was in a relaxed state. Alright, so halfway through, very basic workout. Now I noticed when I was getting started, I was like really relaxed. I was like, oh man, I don't know if I'm going to have a lot of energy, you know? But then after getting into it, like maybe on my second or third set of push-ups, I'm feeling pretty good. I feel like I've got a little extra oomph maybe. Is this because I'm like hyper oxygenated right now or something like that? Or is it because I'm just excited to do this video? All I can say is it is going good so far. The workout is turning out to be a good one, so possibly due to the breathing technique I just did beforehand. After about a 10 minute, 15 minute warm up or just getting into the workout, it felt like all of a sudden I had even more energy than expected. Now by about days five, six, and seven, I noticed that I could hold my breath significantly longer than just the designated one minute on round one and then one and a half minutes on round two and round three. If you want to prolong your breath hold, pause the video now and continue to feel the urge to breathe. All right, very good. <laughs> Just got done, I was able to hold my breath a little bit longer on that third breath hold. I got like two minutes. Oh. Now during this week long experiment, I chose one day to do this at night before I went to bed. This had its positives and this had its negatives and its negatives are essentially my fault. So hear me out here. Doing this before bed, the breathing technique itself was absolutely amazing. I felt more relaxed and ready for bed than ever before. Now my fault and a side effect I got from doing this before bed was because I do intermittent fasting occasionally, I tend to eat a bigger meal towards the end of the night. And it just happened to be on that day I had my meal even later than normal. So I still had a stomach kind of full of food as I went to do this breathing technique, which resulted in me burping, feeling very uncomfortable, almost having some like regurgitation going on. Excuse me. Okay, I decided to do it tonight before I would go to sleep. Um, it did go well. I mean, like, in, in the fact that I feel relaxed right now. I feel definitely relaxed. Like, I'm going to be able to sleep decent. But um, I kind of just got done eating about an hour or two ago, which, you know, maybe you shouldn't eat that close to bed anyways. But, but what I'm trying to say is I wouldn't advise doing this method right after you're done eating because, like, your stomach's full of food and, uh, it just felt like it was kind of like coming back up, you know what I mean? So I think he says you should do it on an empty stomach, but I just thought maybe I could get away with it before bed. But yeah, definitely that's the reason why you want to do it on an empty stomach because when your stomach's full of food, it feels like it's coming back up. <laughs> Anyways, I, st I still feel relaxed, so that's good. So something I would do to improve that is either just have a smaller meal before bed or have my meal earlier so that my stomach clears before I do this technique before bed. Bingo. And now, yes, let me answer the question. A lot of you are probably wondering, did I have any crazy hallucinations, any visuals? Did I communicate with the dancing elves? Not quite. However, at the most, I did notice with the eyes closed, maybe like what seemed to be, hear me out for a second, a concentration of light in the center. It was like there was like almost like a concentration of light, not necessarily light, but just a concentration of something that I could like almost visually see with my eyes, even though my eyes were closed. You know how sometimes you can close your eyes and you see like the, you know, the, like if you look out the window and it's bright, close your eyes, you can kind of see the window there still, or like that light, um, light burn, basically. It was kind of like a light burn, but you know, there's no light there in the middle, basically. So essentially none at all, I mean really. 
but don't let that get you disappointed because going back to the previous thing I was mentioning, the feeling of well-being and the relaxed state that it puts you in and the peace it puts you in is like far better than any visuals in my opinion. Okay, the sleep, the feeling of well-being, yada, 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 but probably the craziest experience I had while doing this whole thing might seem stupid to you, but just hear me out. Coming up to day six, this day in the week was usually a day where I decreased my caffeine intake significantly. Instead of drinking a full cup and a half of coffee, I will maybe only drink three quarters of a cup to a half a cup of coffee. Now usually when I cycle my caffeine down or cut my caffeine down, I get a very bad caffeine withdrawal headache that usually comes about noon to one to two o'clock. However, after doing this breathing technique in the morning on day six, I did not get a single caffeine withdrawal headache, not at all the entire day. It's already almost four o'clock. I've been literally working all day and I don't have a caffeine withdrawal headache at all. Could this be due to the Wim Hof breathing technique? Getting that extra oxygen? Maybe. The only thing is I do feel like a little, a little more relaxed and maybe a little more tired, but no headache. That ability to just get rid of those caffeine withdrawal headaches by doing this technique in the morning on a day where I'm not going to be drinking as much caffeine is far, far, far more worth it than, than anything throughout this whole experiment, in my opinion. I am absolutely gonna do this technique on a day where I decide to cycle down my caffeine intake. Also, getting sick many times over the last many years, it has always been after being way too stressed out for way too long of a time, whether having too many workout days plus stressful work days in a row, et cetera, et cetera. So I am definitely gonna use this technique the next time I feel like I am overwhelmed with too much stress too many days in a row because this technique, what it does from my experience is it just brings that stress down, wipes it out essentially, and just makes you feel refreshed and new again. Now also when it comes to tapping into that deeper mind, controlling your immune system, never getting sick, being able to survive insane amounts of stress and come out untouched, this superhuman ability, did I experience any of that? Maybe. I'm going to say maybe because throughout this experiment, I didn't put myself through any unordinary stressors. I didn't jump in an ice pond. I didn't inject myself with a bacteria endotoxin. I didn't run up a mountain barefoot in zero degree weather, etc. However, when you are doing this breathing exercise and you get past about breath 10 on each and every one of the rounds, you kind of almost hit this state of bliss, this state of awareness and like full body concentration. At first, throughout the first two days, it was almost kind of like a hyper awareness where it felt like, oh man, I think I'm gonna pass out. I'm feeling too weird and I wanna stop. But from my experience, when I started to get used to this, about days three, four, five, six, and seven, that uneasy feeling of wanting to just jolt and jump out of the breathing session becomes more of a deep meditative focus where it feels, without getting too weird, like you can almost tell your body to do what you want. I am sorry if that explanation is a little too abstract. The only way to really understand what's going on is trying it for yourself. Now, if you are gonna try this for yourself, I highly recommend you watch Wim's tutorial on this. As he says, you don't wanna do this while driving, while standing in a pool, anywhere where if you passed out, you or others could be in danger. You wanna do it either sitting or lying down. Also, it's always good to be sure you're in good health before exercising or doing anything like this. But when it comes to taking control of your body on a deeper level, I really do feel like there is some serious potential here. Will I test this in the future by putting myself through some stresses one way or another? Maybe on a smaller scale but we'll see. Hopefully I didn't forget anything. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I have more one week challenges coming out, so stay tuned, it's gonna get interesting. Don't forget to subscribe, turn those notifications on. Thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you all have a good day. Peace, I will see you all in the next video.